But what we're doing there in Namibia is we're helping people, and we're helping people through conservation. And we're trying to empower them so that they have their own resources, skills, and knowledge so they can sustainably manage their natural resources. And wildlife is a key part of that process. The people in this particular photograph are, are demonstrative of the type of people we work with. The gentleman in the, the right-hand corner there is the late George Mutra. He was in exile for 25 years during the apartheid era in, in Namibia. And when he came back in 1990, he had a dream. It was a dream of not only him, but of the Basuvia people. And that was to return wildlife to their area, their eastern Caprivi, an area that had been hammered quite badly by the South African Defense Force. In the 1990s, uh, the wildlife numbers were almost non-existent in that area. Today, that area, the, the game migration from Botswana that historically were in place have restarted. We've got over 1,000 impala, we've got over 2,000 elephant, we've got lion coming back in, buffalo, and it's a real success story for the people here. Unfortunately, George Mutua only lived to see part of that process. He was struck by lightning in 2000, and he died as a result of that. But he was a great person, and he was posthumously awarded the Conservationist of the Year Award in the in 2000. Some of the principles that we worked with in the program, uh, we work through partnerships. Uh, WWF is there assisting the million institutions. We work with 13 NGOs. Uh, we work with government. We work with private sector. And we work with communities. Similarly, we empower the communities through devolved rights, recognizing that communities are the ones living with the wildlife and the resources. They have to have the rights to manage them and benefit from them. And that's a sharp contrast from the colonial history where the rights to wildlife were to government. And wildlife at that point in time were detriments to the livelihoods and people, and there was great resentment toward wildlife as a result of communities not being able to gain and benefit from wildlife. Uh, we create linkages between the natural resource management and the responsible, the responsible management of that and the benefits that are being generated from the uh, wildlife and the natural resources. Similarly, we promote sustainability of the program by working with the private sector and promoting what we call payment for equal service system services. One of the things that makes Unimedia quite unique is its area to semi-arid environment. And if you look at the situation we have, uh, and not just the middle but many arid to semi-arid environments, you find that your indigenous biodiversity is much more adapted to an arid environment. And their productivity level is much higher than the non-indigenous biodiversity production. So, but then you have a situation where governments like to promote self-reliance on agriculture and promote agricultural production. And so they put in policy interventions that suppress the value of your indigenous populations. And they also put in subsidies, such as agricultural subsidies, or market access that, that are not necessarily sustainable, that drive up the value of agricultural production. So we have a situation in Namibia where we actually have market forces that are capable of working for us because the natural production ability of our natural wildlife species and indigenous fauna outproduces what can naturally be produced by non-indigenous species. The program that we're working on, the way we work, our primary audience are the communal area residents that are in the communal areas that really suffered extensively through the apartheid regime that was there. And we work through structures called conservancies, which are self-organized bodies by local communities that identify the boundaries of the areas that they're living in, have a representative committee, have a constitution, and have a, a vision of where they're going. And we promote our work through civil society and the NGOs and through NAXA, and we do it through three thematic areas, one being improving the natural resources in the area, one being improving governance and uh, representation of the people so that they can speak out on behalf of themselves more effectively, and thirdly, through improving the benefits flow that can be derived from natural resources found in the area. Some of the impacts on the program are quite impressive in, in terms of uh, the first conservancies being registered in 1998, and we can see the land number of conservancies has gone up quite radically since 1998, where we now have 14 percent of the country that's covered by communal conservancies. And what's of particular significance to us as conservationists 
is that out of the 50 registered conservancies, 31 of them are, uh, it's, uh, it's a pointer here, next to these national parks or in key corridors between the parks. So the conservancies are not only benefiting the communities, but they're actually enhancing the viability of the national park system in the Midwest. The program has become extremely popular. Uh, the fact that people are now benefiting from their wildlife, it's changed their attitudes, where wildlife are no longer perceived with hostility, but wildlife are valued and they're being planned in as part of the daily widen head strategies of the communities. And it's created a stimulating action where we now have about 230,000 Namibian citizens that are part of the program, and that's equivalent to one out of every eight Namibian citizens. So it's quite impressive in terms of that. We think the program will peak out as far as the number of conservancies within the next three to five years, and we'll end up with a property one out of every six Namibian citizens and about 20% of the country being covered by communal conservancies. Some of the activities that we promote are the management plans for conservancies, monitoring systems that cons conservancy communities themselves can implement and carry out. Training, uh, since the beginning of the program in 1993, we documented over 150,000 person days of capacity building and training that's been given to both NGO, government, and the communities. Uh, the income building side of it, we work closely with conservancies to promote a network of uh, uh, campsites. Yeah. Am, I, am I in the way here? Uh, and, and these campsites are now being spread out around the country. We have about 20 of those, uh, and they're creating employment and income in extremely remote areas of the country. Uh, joint Venture Lodges, it's a partnership between conservancies and private sector, where private sector pays anywhere from si 6 to 10 percent of the gross turnover back to the conservancies, and also uh, employs local community members, trains them, and contributes to conservation. 